Hola, bon dia. Carl Munson here with the Good Morning Portugal live stream YouTube channel and podcast. How are you today? Tudo bem? Como estás? Right. Um, we will endeavour to finish by 9.30 today, although that is looking a bit unlikely. So, however, let's see what we can do. Uh, we are looking at, um, yes, uh, the p possible advent of mask wearing in public places. Uh, more so than currently um, specified. Uh, we will also be looking at the Brexit Brit Bank bungle. Um, couldn't resist that alliteration. But yes, uh, people with British bank accounts might um, find themselves without banking uh, fairly soon. Uh, Mrs M's in the studio with Junior. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Um, and um, some light relief, actually, with all of that to finish with. What? I'm trying to do a live stream here. That's a okay. Go and play with the super glue. Good boy. Um, only kidding. His mum's got it under control. And some light relief at the end. Almoral Castle. Totally dragonless. Or is it? Um, so we will. Uh, somebody, uh, a friend of mine, took a picture of themselves at the top of Almoral Castle. And I thought, we don't, haven't travelled virtually around Portugal for a little while. We must do that. It, maybe it's got, all got a bit heavy, gloomy and doomy. And we just need to celebrate a bit more about Portugal, why we're here and what we love about the country. I think we do do that. Um, and we certainly whet the appetites of those on their way here. But maybe we could do even more of that. So Almoral to finish with. Uh, but of course, um, the, I just alluded to the spookiness and, and dragonless or not at Almoral tonight. Uh, on Good Evening Portugal, we will be doing that paranormal Portugal thing where we'll be looking at um, the phenomena of Entroncamento, the incredible Indiana Jones style palace in uh, Sintra and the possibility of UFOs over Alantasia. And in the second part of, um, of the show tonight, we're talking to uh, Jacqueline Mary Brown, um, expat elder about her experience here and her, her um, experience of spirituality. Do you have an experience of spirituality? Her her views and her person yes her personal experience of her faith um, because I, I know this is a we have we, I've been having a correspondence with one of our wonderful community here about you know to, it's difficult talking about religion and spirituality uh, but then again we don't shy away from politics do we and I think it, it will be sort of it wouldn't be balanced or right to not consider faith um, and religion and spirituality in a country that is as deeply religious as Portugal is. So we will put a tentative toe in that water tonight from 10 o'clock. A few good mornings coming in before we go to the weather. Um, Elsa Riley, good morning to you. Thank you for checking in. What is a fine uh, horse that you're riding there by the look of it in your picture. Um, hola, bon dia, Carla and Luisa. Yes, your Mrs. M in the studio. She's gone now. You can tell, can't you? Along with young Solomon. Um, we're just back to me and Jimmy. Jimmy snoozing quietly in the corner. Um, and uh, yes, peace uh, is regained in the studio here. Bon dia, thank you, Henry. Uh, bon dia from, and love to you and yours as well. Bon dia from sunny Hampshire, last day of summer, as 10 degree temperature drop to come. Wow, yes, this is the turn of the seasons. I feel a song coming on. Uh, Paul Williams, good morning to you. How are you doing? Uh, Terry Hamill, hello from Kashkai, stuck in the apartment due to sun being COVID positive. Oh, no. Um, good to hear your program. Uh, thank you, Terry. And sorry to hear of that news. Um, and here's, here's to a speedy recovery. Um, hopefully, um, yeah, that won't be uh, causing you too many problems for too long. And uh, yeah, very sorry to hear of that, uh, presumably a recent test result and all that you ha now have to do as, as, as a consequence. Uh, good morning to you, Terry and family. Will Thompson, uh, bon vitamin D. Very good, Will. Very, very good indeed. A little reminder there, public service announcement. Uh, from Mr. Thompson. Now, don't forget your vitamin D. Uh, very good. Um, good morning from Anna Forsberg. Good morning to you, Anna. How are you doing? And Natalie and Bon dia from Sunny Milton Keynes from Vitor and me. Um, hola, bon dia, Vitor. Um, todo bien? Y consigo. I'm just busting out my Portuguese for Vitor there, me and Vitor. So um, let's move on, shall we, um, to see if we can make this 9.30 deadline today. Going to go to, um, obviously, uh, all, all, the, all the news seems to be around uh, the pandemic and the preparations for winter uh, surges, spikes, and so on. So it would be remiss of me not to take a quick look at that, and we will do now. Uh, at one of my favorite sources of news about this, George Branco. Um, this, this guy is good. Good writer. Uh, Portuguese news in English. He's been doing this since shortly after the um, pandemic uh, came to our attention. And obviously it's, it's been with us for so long now. It seems like 
yeah, any other kind of life, life and lifestyle is a dim and distant memory. You know, we, we have, we have a, a new normal now, don't we? But not only do we have a, a new normal, we have the, the shifting sands of, um, of the situation as well, which are, I don't know, well, I was going to say making it worse. It is, yeah, you know, this is, this is not great for, for quality of life. And we, we understand, of course, to some extent why we're doing it. But I like George Branco's coverage. Uh, you can get this yourself delivered to your your um, email. Um, GeorgeBranco.substack.com is the email address for that. Um, sorry, the web address for that. And um, he puts out some excellent news, succinct, to the point, well written, and pretty pr- pretty um, unlike me, um, without a lot of subjective uh, tinges and opinion on it. Uh, so masks to be recommended in busy outdoor areas is headline. Winter health plan is to preserve human life and protect the most vulnerable, which I'm sure we can all get behind. I mean, obviously, um, that is the the headline view from the government as well. The winter health plan in Portugal is to preserve human life and protect the most vulnerable. Um, and of course, you know, that's not just a COVID thing, is it? That's, you would hope that we're doing that all the time. And there are many other areas in our lives. There, are, Here I am going subjective again, in which we could take a similarly uh, hard line. Um, poverty, for example, um, by the numbers, more COVID-19 patients. Uh, sadly, this is 13 died yesterday. This was um, from the 21st. This was released yesterday uh, than any day since early July. And Publico reports there are more in hospital than any time since May 29th. It does appear that these figures are starting to catch up with the elevated cases we've been seeing since the middle of August, although the number of people in intensive care is the same as it was a week ago. As you can see from the chart further down the page, those of you who can see this visual, that curve is still climbing and average daily cases have reached their highest point since late April. And I hasten to add here, you know, I know it's obvious and I know Donnie Trump got in some trouble for this, but more more testing does mean more cases, of course. Um, so we do have to bear that in mind, I think, um, opening myself up for all sorts of possible um criticism and ridicule but that's okay um that's okay we can talk here on the good morning portugal live stream uh, the winter health plan as said there to preserve human life protect the most vulnerable health authorities have unveiled the critical plan to get the national health service the sns through its most challenging winter reports a diario de noticias um, this, these are the sources that george uses uh, the health plan for autumn winter 20 to 21 aims to preserve human life protect the most vulnerable and prepare responses for an expected growth in COVID-19 cases, as was always expected. Yes, of course, uh, with the, um, you know, as there is always a a virus and flu season um, as we go into the um, colder months and into the new year. It includes regular, sorry, I'm mixing up. Don't, don't, please accept that I'm adding to George's uh, or be aware that I'm adding to George's reporting here. It includes regular testing for health professionals, new dedicated areas for respiratory patients in hospitals, and primary healthcare clinics, and a task force to help better manage non-COVID patients, reinforcing flu vaccination efforts, stockpiling of PPE, and an increase in both capacity and speed of testing are also part of the plan, as you might expect. The plan aims to have test results available sooner, both through extra capacity and the use of specific rapid tests that are slightly less accurate. What? But promise to provide results in an hour. So you want a fast test that might not be very accurate. Uh, I don't personally see the point of that, but there you go. Uh, masks to be recommended in busy outdoor areas. Here's the thing that really affects um, the, to me, the, the, the quality of, of public life. Uh, Director General of Health Grasa Freitas uh, says her department will soon recommend wearing masks in any busy area, even outside, in situations where you can't guarantee physical distancing. Um, so I, I, I suppose, what, what is that? I mean, a lot of these places where you might expect those circumstances aren't allowed anyway, uh, like football games or nightclubs. Um, and when you're inside, um, a, a, an establishment, a, a, you know, hospitality establishment, you're meant to be wearing a mask on entry and when you're moving about. So I don't quite understand this. And this is part of the problem, isn't it? It's like, well, what does that actually mean? And I think this is going on all over uh, the world where people, are now experiencing measures that aren't quite as straightforward as the early days of this. Um, isn't it? We have been in this so long that there are now early days. Um, she said it wasn't a change of opinion, but a reflection of the fact, this is going back to Grasa Freitas, that the department had always looked for mask wearing from every an evolving standpoint. 
The recommendation will be for outdoor use when we are very close to others in busy places, she said. Those recommendations should be coming out very shortly. I think a lot of people naturally do this. Like my local market, <clears throat> a lot of it is outdoors and even the indoor part is very sort of, it's not like a shop. It's, you know, it's open-ended uh, and people wear masks when they're milling about. And I'm not sure, have you got an example, anybody, of where we m might now need to have um, more mask wearing? Um, there are other things in George's report here. In brief, um, I recommend you get this for yourself. Um, he's a good man. People are saving more because of the pandemic, interestingly. People have sp spent less, didn't they, in lockdown and maybe got used to it. Uh, presidential candidate, I think this is a name to watch, Ana Gomez. She is my bet for the new presidency. Um, don't hold me to that, but there's just a sense I get. Uh, I feel it in my water, in my uh, virtual octopus. Uh, has a party supporting her, but it's not her own. <laughs> Funny times in politics. Portuguese want Mar Marcelo to um, be more demanding of the government. And I know he he delivered a blistering attack on politicians saying that they were too navel-gazing. Uh, guilty as charged, you would think, right? Um, politicians do live in bubbles necessarily, don't they? I mean, I think they're quite wealthy people, uh, quite influential people. And then you tend to move in certain circles and then that puts you out of other circles where you might be aware of what life is like for the rest of people, <laughs> I, I guess. So, yes, that's, that, that should perhaps be the job of a president to be that check and balance on politicians. And uh, he is being urged to do that is uh, President Marcelo Rebelo de Souza. And um, two more things. More than a million people have downloaded the Stay Away COVID tracing app. And uh, George says you should too, because it works uh, the more people have it. I get that. I get that. You could say that about Facebook, though, couldn't, couldn't you? It's like, I want more people on Facebook so I can talk to them. You know, we have to balance that, don't we, with um, uh, people's own wishes. And uh, finally, Algarve unemployment jumps 178% in August. Um, as you probably won't be surprised to hear because of what's happened to tourism in Portugal. But then at the same time, I'm sure like me, you'll be shocked to see that actual figure, 178% unemployment. And this, of course, is why um, Marcelo sh should absolutely uh, be more demanding of the government, because each of those people out of work in the Algarve as a result of the crash in tourism, you know, is a personal and private um, ch challenge, tragedy, possibly. And these are the things, you know, you've got the big headline figures, 178 percent. But behind that is very individual, personal and private suffering, uh, which um, I'm sure we can do better on, quite frankly. A uh, quick look at the weather then and then back to some more of your comments. Lisbon, 18 degrees, partly cloudy, um, looking at 25 degrees to there today and some rain tomorrow. It will be cloudy today as well in Porto. 17 degrees and partly cloudy, 23 to look forward to in Porto today, and some rain, rain for the next three days, it would appear. Uh, comfortable temperatures, however, um, in, in among that uh, rain falling upon you. Uh, Coimbra, 17 degrees, partly cloudy at the moment, 26 to look forward to today, and rain tomorrow and the day after, Wednesday and Thursday in Coimbra. And Faro, finally, 19 degrees, mostly cloudy, 26 degrees to look forward to today. And actually... Some lovely temperatures for the rest of the week, although kind of cloudy, um, cloudy for the rest of the week too. So there you go. There's the weather. And uh, I want to take a look now at this banking story. Uh, apologies again. I mean, uh, this is a standing um, apology uh, for um, for uh, anyone who's not British. Uh, I'm sure they're sick of our rubbish now, anyone who's not British uh, in the EU. Um, but uh, the, this is quite a, a, a sort of, well, a very concerning story for many people who bank in Britain but live abroad. Um, before, hold on a minute, just got to, got to um, check on your comments here. Uh, Henry says, have you noticed first lockdown spring equinox measures eased summer solstice, another lockdown on an autumn equinox? Ooh, Henry, what are you suggesting there? <laughs> um, I'll let you come back on that. Uh, Entronc y asustador. I do wish I knew what you were saying there, Gary. I'm sure you will elaborate. Um, and thank you for your help yesterday. Um, most excellent uh, to meet your son yesterday, Gary. Um, Penny, bon dia, Carl, listening whilst pedaling on my exercise bike. I feel quite privileged and honoured. I mean, a lot of people do watch daytime telly, don't they, or, or cable or whatever. And, um, you know, to take in the important news of the day whilst exercising. And so I consider myself um, very privileged to be uh, on your sort of media consumption there whilst, whilst you're staying fit and well, Penny. Uh, food for thought going forward. Massive comment here. 
which I'll just hide behind for a moment. Influenza normally has a transmission rate of 1.3. In today's social climate, it should be way less. Hand washing, don't go to work, school with cough, sneeze, fever. Um, flu is only transmissive with symptoms. Question, how is flu still getting about? Good question, Will. And this, this is the mind of Will Thompson that ponders such things. Uh, but the, here, the, here it is for us, the rest of us to consider. Two, the common cold coronavirus is giving us cross-reactive T-cell immunity is two days asymptomatic. We need to find out who is getting colds. And if our friend HK49 and others are still out there and doing okay, that's the, oh, and then it finishes. But uh, please respond to Will. He often has very excellent insights around COVID. And I'm sure this is one of them. Anna Forsberg, thanks, Will. In Sweden, we don't need a mask because it could give a false feeling of safety. Well, I never. Thank you for the voice of, um, well, uh, let me just say thank you for that view, Anna. Uh, it's more important with distance, our experts say. Um, I heard this yesterday. So different, ex different country, different experts, um, different symptoms for COVID around the world, depending on where you go. Um, it's quite hard to get um, some a sense of um, what stability or reliability of information around this whole thing, especially when you look beyond the borders of your own country or where you live. Uh, Marcelo is great, says Gilles de Pereira. Good morning, Gilda. Um, it's great because he tries um, th to get everyone going in the same direction, basically. Yeah, that goes the same way. He tries to unify the parties. Yeah, and th this is this, and he's his own kind of good cop, bad cop by the sound of it, Gilda. You know. On the one hand, he's saying, like, you lot are a bunch of navel-gazing um, whatevers, and um, come on, we're all in this together. He, he, you know, this should be the, like the grandfather of parliament or the grandfather around parliament, being encouraging and pointing things out when necessary, right? They need addressing. Yes. Um, and uh, this was great to face the pandemia. I think, um, uh, yes, this is Marcelo's role in that. And, of course, not only... Not only did he um, come up with this sort of grandfatherly approach to the politicians, he, he's in the water as well, wasn't he? He was in the water saving two damsels in distress in the Algarve who floated out to sea on their um, inflatable. Um, so there he was uh, on every level, uh, politically and practically. Uh, and Gary, thank you, Gary. Um, thank you, Gilda, as well, for your comments. So, Entronk e Asustador. And Troncamento is spooky. Apologies to anybody who lives in, in Troncamento. We mean that in a good way, and we will be looking at the phenom, phenome, ph phenoma, phenomena, the phenomena de Troncamento tonight on the Good Evening Portugal show. And I think good morning to you, Astrid. Hi, Astrid. Uh, how are you doing uh, over there in Expats Portugal? Check it out, folks, if you haven't been there already, expatsportugal.com. We have a wonderful um, Portugal Calling um, webinar on Thursday evening with the British Embassy, no less, um, who will have, maybe they will be, um, I mean, they can't fix this, but I'm sure uh, they'll have a view on um, what to do if your British bank account is being um, not frozen, but closed, uh, which I'll get onto in just a moment. Uh, Shelley Lowry, good morning, Shelley. I understand that the flu season that just finished in Australia was at 10% of normal because of what they did for COVID. Interesting, huh? And in, uh, thank you, Shelley, uh, Sweden and Nordic countries are doing well, clearly doing well. They also fortified foods with vitamin D. They have supplementing in their culture. And that, to him, is not a coincidence. Okay, so onward then to this um, banking thing, which I think will be an increasing source of anxiety uh, for people. Uh, and that's not the only reason I share it, because I don't want to just cause anxiety for people. But um, Gary uh, brought my attention to this. I had seen it floating about in uh, various social media groups. And I'm sure there will be some practical help, uh, as well as questions, in the forum of expatsportugal.com about this. Um, let's look at what we can do about this practically, as well as um, understanding what's going on here. So from The Guardian, uh, excuse me in just one minute, I just need to have a little sip of water. That's better. Uh, going at a cracking pace this morning. So, yeah, bear with me. Um, have I unmuted? Yes, I have unmuted my mic. That would be embarrassing if not. Uh, thousands of Britons living in the EU told their UK bank accounts will be closed. So it's not just a Portuguese issue. Any, any Britons living uh, in the EU are finding them the other side of the Brexit curtain come the 31st of December. Lloyds and Barclays among banks taking action due to lack of post-Brexit trade deal. Oh, Thousands of Brexit, uh, Britons, 
thousands of Brexiteers, thousands of Britons living in the EU will have their UK bank accounts closed by the end of the year because of the UK's failure to agree a post-Brexit trade deal. Uh, Lloyds, Barclays and Coots. Good heavens. Do any of you have Coots accounts? Uh, that is so posh. And you wouldn't expect this, would you? You would expect Coots to have a branch in um, Lisbon, wouldn't you? And to be able to, to to personally take care of this matter for you or, or with your butler or whatever. Um, they've informed retail and business customers that they will lose their accounts before or when the Brexit transition period ends on the 31st of December. And more banks are expected to follow suit. Lloyd's Banking Group, which includes Halifax and Bank of Scotland, has contacted its 13,000 uh, customers in the Netherlands, Slovakia, Germany, Ireland and Portugal, warning them they must take or, or make alternative arrangements as the bank is no longer allowed to offer services. A spokesperson said, we have written to a small number of customers living in affected EU countries to let them know that due to the UK's exit from the EU, regrettably, regrettably, uh, we will no longer be able to provide them with some UK-based banking services. We want to keep customers informed and offer advice on next steps. That is such a corporate little <laughs> phrase, isn't it? Next steps. Let's have a deep dive into the next steps, guys, and see what we can do for our customers here. Uh, nothing, as it turns out. And I'm going to fast forward. Um, I don't know. There's some interesting quotes here. As this begins to dawn on us at what this might mean, depending on how sort of deep you are into um, the um, banking system in the UK, um, it's like, oh dear, that's, yes, and that's going to be affected. And so's that. Oh dear, that's not good. Um, so I have found a quote here from somebody. One, one, who, one person who lives in Germany was told she would no longer be able to use her Barclay card, which she depends on for transactions within the UK. So, okay, so they've got, um, they're still trading in somewhere in the UK and they're using their Barclay card for that. This is not the first instance. I have heard of somebody living in Portugal now who Barclay card have said, you can't carry on using your Barclay card over here. You live here now. You can't have a Barclay card anymore. So they expect that, not just bank accounts, but credit cards too. The customer who did not want to be named said, I've had the card for 40 years and pay it off each month from my pensions, which are paid into my UK account. So there's another thing, pensions being paid into the UK account. So I'm not sure I'd qualify for a German credit card, she said. Um, so this is going to cause some aggro for people, basically, isn't it? Uh, and let's see what we can do about that. The, hence my the launching of my um, expats choice. Um, well, they're not awards. They're not awards because, um, you know, looking at the Emmy ceremony, it's no fun having an award ceremony anymore, is it? Virtual. You know, it's just it's like football without a crowd. Emmy without, you know, these um, award ceremonies without an audience are also pretty poor. Um, so it's going to be a chart, folks. This is expat's choice. It's going to be an ongoing chart. Um, at any moment, you'll be able to find out who the favorite bank or wine or beer or car hire company. I did think of a few more this morning, and I would like your help on that. We've got a few of the um, uh, Good Morning Portugal supporters. Uh, you know, I've sent a message out to them via coffee.com asking them to, to help in both ways. You know, what, what or whose praises do you want to sing? And what mistakes would you like other expats to avoid making uh, in terms of all the, the services and companies we use? I even thought, you know, one category could be the best camera, couldn't it? So when people are coming to Portugal, it's like, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're looking for some um, helpful service from a camera, wouldn't that be great if we could give a Good Morning Portugal award? Um, having said they're not going to be awards like that. But I mean, you know, they, they would, I'm sure they would like to know that the Good Morning Portugal um, viewers, listeners, uh, podcast consumers think that the most popular camera in Portugal is. I mean, that's that'll be pretty good feedback, I think. And then they can be the model of best practice, could they not? Um, so that that to come, it's going to be an online uh, questionnaire, and for each category, going to keep it really simple. And at any given time, we basically have a top five or a top ten. Who who is the people's choice for the best bank, for example? Because that's going to be an issue here with this thing. You know, if you're not banked in this country, it's probably a very good idea to become banked in Portugal and bite that bullet, get your autograph ready because you're going to need it about 27 times to open a bank account and obviously take your filing cabinet along with you with all the various DNA samples of your grandparents as well. Okay, so I don't know what your views are on that, um, but this is that's ongoing for us right now. Will Thompson also says that's right. So as it migrates north from a smaller starting base, it shouldn't be exploding 
here anytime soon. So why is the media saying it is? Okay. Um, yeah, uh, we, we, we don't. This is the problem, Will. This is the problem we've got, um, isn't it? The, you know, the, what tends to come out of the media is very, very specific information, uh, the, the, the source of which people aren't entirely trusting of. You know, it's, th these, are, these are tough times. And then, you know, we face the measures as a result of that. Uh, and I think there's growing, um, what, would it, what would it be called? Suspicion at the very least. Unrest, obviously, as we can see in other parts of the, of the world. Bon dia, uh, Constancia, 19 degrees at the moment. Going to look uh, into the spring, summer, autumn theory. What's happening in Entronc? Ooh, the, <laughs> are you not familiar of the Entroncamento phenomena or the phenomena de Entroncamento, uh, Sarah? Sarah, um, Join us tonight from 10 to find out more about that. It's really quite amazing. Just give you one highlight. Chicken with four feet. Uh, oh, and another one a plant, a nightshade plant that grows both tomatoes and potatoes. I could give you more right now, but I want you to tune in at 10 tonight um, to discover more. Okay, so, and finally, um, I think we're going to come back to some of the bank business uh, in just a moment, but I want to share with you um, delightful Almorol uh, in um, Portugal by way of some light relief and to remember, we live in an awesome country here, those of us who do live here, with many delights. Uh, this one of them, Almoral Castle, you know, as well as all that's going on in the world right now, uh, and obviously what's you know how that's manifesting in Portugal, we still are, are able, at least for the time being, um, to travel pretty freely and go and see, you know, around every corner in Portugal is some delight or other, and this is a notable one. Sharing with you now from TravelingBites.com, Almoral Castle, totally dragonless. Or is it? Nice cliffhanger, nice nice start. Makes you want to read that blog, doesn't it? So here we go. There it is on the screen there. Beautiful shot looking up at Almoral from the river, from the Tagus River. Um, what do you want to be when you grow up? It says here on Travelling Bites. Thank you to them. According to my family law, at the tender age of six, I firmly insisted on becoming a movie location scout. A bit at six, a bit uncommon. It still sounded less outlandish than my father's wish to be a border patrol dog when he would grow up. <laughs> neither of us achieved these aspirations yearning for new places eventually led to a nomadic life uh, but it was not until i stumbled across the charismatic almoral castle to be reminded of my childhood dream and this is beautifully illustrated with some wonderful shots of the castle uh, on a sunny afternoon the castle is picture perfect at first sight it looks like a movie set the crew just left for lunch so it's quiet at the moment but there is a movement up in the tower who is there princess fiona or rapunzel or perhaps some new coming beauty from the future Hollywood blockbuster. <clears throat> this is great. The enchanted word envelops the castle. Time slows down. Welcome to a fairy tale. And uh, let's get serious for a moment. Um, this person says, let me just find out who that is, because um, they are rather marvellous. I do like their writing style. Um, hold on a minute. Um, no, it, I can't sell. Who is Travelling Bites? It is Elena... Yes, Elena, I believe, and Andre. I'm not sure which of them wrote this particular article, however. But thank you, Elena and Andre, uh, for sharing this suddenly serious twist now in this uh, blog on TravellingBites.com and Almoral Castle. With all its sublime romanticism, the castle was once a force to be reckoned with. It is one of the most emblematic castles of the Christian reconquest period in Portugal. Situated on an island in the middle of the River Tagus, Almoral stands out from the crowd due to its historical significance and surrounding landscape. And there's the ferry you, you catch to it. Four euros, I believe. Uh, together with the castles of Tomar, Zezer and Cardiga, it, it formed the so-called Tagus line, Linho, Linha, I beg your pardon, Linha do Tejo, the defensive line of fortifications along the River Tagus, controlled by the Knights Templar. And there's the view they had looking down the river, at any marauders heading their way. Uh, there is little left of the original structure. It consisted of three levels, which have been altered over the centuries. The unique footprint still exists and gives an idea of the overall dimensions. The keep is actually an innovation at this castle, appearing in the 12th century after the castle of Tamar, the principal defensive redoubt of the Templars in Portugal. Similarly, the watchtowers were innovations brought into the western part of the Iberian Peninsula by the order and applied in Almoral. 
the high walls were protected by the nine circular watchtowers. I'm sure that's significant, Henry. Uh, they have irregular shapes, largely thanks due to the uneven terrain where they were built. Inside, there are several stone gates that connect different parts of the castle. And this is such an engineering feat, isn't it? Incredible. Um, it is thought that the castle was constructed on the site of a prim primitive Castro Lusitamo that the Romans conquered during the first century BC. The exact construction date is unclear, but it is known that the castle of Almorol existed before the beginning of the Kingdom of Portugal. Over time, it was rebuilt by a succession of invading warriors, including the Alans. <laughs> the Alans. I, who knew that there were a group of, of invading warriors, all called Alan? My father-in-law is called Alan, and I can see him um, as an invading force or warrior in his younger days, moving across Europe with other Alans. I've heard of the Visigoths and I've heard of the Moors, but I had not heard of the Alans. Uh, when the castle was conquered from the Moors in 1129 by the Portuguese forces, it was called Almorala, and Alfonso and Enriquez, the first king of Portugal, presented it to the to Gualdin Paish, who, whose statue you'll see in, in, um, in the Tamar Square there, the master of the Templars. According to an inscription on the main gate, its reconstruction work began in 1171. So all of this... In 11, we've got our internet in this age, haven't we? But look at this. This is an amazing thing from 1171. The castle lost its strategic role after the, the order of the Knights Templar would, was dissolved and the need to defend the territory no longer existed. It was abandoned and fell into ruins. And isn't that a great thing? Isn't that a wonderful symbol? You know, peace prevails. Don't need the castle anymore. Fantastic. Except for a historical record to, to educate mankind. Um, so let's have a look at um, <clears throat> one of the legends here. Let's look at legend number two. In the 9th or 10th century, Beatrice was the daughter of the cruel Visigoth warrior Dom Ramiro. He killed a Moorish woman and her daughter over a cup of water. You see, and, so, and soon captured an 11-year-old Moorish boy. Unknown to Dom Ramiro, he was the son and brother of the murdered women. The boy became the page of Dom Ramiro Almorol, where he lived with his wife and daughter Beatrice. The revengeful boy understandably, of course, slowly poisoned the Don's wife until she died. While Don Ramiro was off at war, the girl and her page fell in love and his desire for revenge vanished. Oh my goodness, the Lord works in a mysterious way. The universe works in a mysterious way. Soon Don Ramiro returned, bringing with him a knight to whom he had promised Beatrice. Oh dear, plot twist. The Moor told Beatrice of her father's cruelty and about his own murder of her mother. The young couple vanished without trace. Don Ramiro died of remorse it is said that on some nights with a full moon, you can see the Moor hugging Donna Beatrice with Dom Ramiro kneeling at her feet, kneeling at their feet, asking for their forgiveness. Wow. That is the stuff that castle legends should be made of. And do we, do we get the question answered about dragons or not? Or is that just left hanging there? Um, just to put it on the map, literally, uh, we, we have um, Almoral as sat, as said, on the Tagush there. And as we zoom out, you will see that it is near uh, Entroncamento and Torres Novas, as some of the bigger towns, and a branch um, down the river as well. Um, so, uh, and not far from, if, you got, if you've got a day trip, you could go to uh, Galega, uh, which is the, um, the equestrian capital of Portugal as well. Galega is a lovely little town and famed for its um, horsemanship and, and, and horse breeding and so on. Uh, Galega, I think it's the same one. Uh, and you're on the, that really nice, um, uh, is it the Ripetejo Valley? Uh, the, the, the alternative route, the countrified route that you can take from Lisbon up country. Um, I, I really enjoyed doing that uh, one time as an alternative to, to the A1. Uh, so there you go, Almorol. How are we doing for time? 34 minutes past the hour. Back to a few of your lovely comments. And... Um, Let's go to Jim now in Germany. Good morning from a sunny and cool Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm late to this morning's discussion and missed the first 15 minutes. In my humble opinion, if everyone would practice social distancing, 1.5 meter separation, and wear masks when that is not possible, I believe we'd get a handle on this pandemic. Probably not 100%, but the situation would be much better than it is today. So Jim's up for um, yeah, staying with the social distance, at least 1.5 meters, and wearing masks when that's not possible. Uh, not masks all the time, by the sound of it. Thanks, Jim. Uh, good morning, Portugal. Thumbs up, Mark. Yes, indeed. 
Um, I thought he'd forgotten my name there for a minute. But yes, the, the, the Good Morning Portugal thumbs up for, and this is the people's poll, the people's choice. Uh, going back to what I was saying about um, expats choice, our new chart of the favourite, um, whatever it be in Portugal, in our in our actual life experience, you know, is it going to be Superbok? Is it going to be Sagres? Is it going to be Millennium? Is it going to be Ativo or Revolut, an outsider? You know, is it going to be the Revolut card? Is it going to be Zest, car rental? Or is it going to be a, a local one to you? And these are all recommendations we can make to make life easier for people who are touring, visiting on holiday, if that should ever happen again. And of course, those moving to Portugal as well. From our own experience and, you know, not to do with press releases and, you know, all that sort of marketing malarkey. Um, you know, there's a time and a place for that. But I really like the idea of us having an ongoing, um, basically a chart, pick of the pops, pick of the pops, what's popular among uh, among us lot. And we can recommend that to other people from our own experience. Um, and uh, Elsa says, bank, uh, as well as the best bank in Portugal, can an account be opened with that bank online? Yes, you see, um, that would be, I guess, in our small print, wouldn't it? Uh, we will go into a little bit of detail as to why we like these uh, institutions, organizations as well. And of course, that is a key criteria. I mean, can you open a bank uh, online uh, in Portugal? I don't know. I don't know anyone who's done that, but I'm sure we can answer that question. I'm just going quiet for a minute because little Jimmy, the good morning Portugal puppy, he is about eight months old now and he's asleep and his tail's wagging. Isn't that a beautiful thing? When Oh, his eyes are flickering. And he's been wagging his tail. And I like to think it's because he's seen me in his dreams. <laughs> so, uh, oh my goodness, Constancia is where I'm hoping to buy. Hello. So this is great. Making friends. Uh, Elsa saying hello to Sarah. Sarah there. Uh, forgive me, uh, not knowing which way to pronounce that. Sarah, Sarah. Grasa, good morning to you. Hello from Grasa to everyone. Good morning, Portugal. And good morning, world. What a lovely greeting. Thank you, Grasa. Um, Oh, bow to the Allens. I can't tell my father-in-law, can I, that there was once a warrior force in Europe called the Allens. But I need to find out more. I do need to find out more about that. But yes, um, anyone here called Allen this morning? And, you know, were you, a, were you a, a, a European warrior in a past life? Bon dia from Neil Perkins. Hey, Neil, how are you feeling? How's your liver? Um, really interesting to see your comments in our Wine Ninjas group, The Inner Chamber. It sounds like a secret society, like unlike, not unlike the Knights Templar, but instead of um, <laughs> instead of some holy war being fought, we are tasting Portugal's wine every Thursday night at nine. So, hi, good morning to you, Neil. Uh, how are you doing? Uh, Elsa says, I love Galega. I think I've pronounced that correctly. I've been to the horse fair. Brilliant three-day event. Yeah, it's lovely there, isn't it? And in its own right, it's a lovely little town. Uh, popped in there. As I said, I was driving back on the alternative route from Lisbon up north and uh, just going along the, uh, I think it's the River Tejo Valley there. And um, yeah, just stopped off at Galega. Didn't know about the horse thing. Just loved the town in its own right. But yeah, the, 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 obviously for people who love horses, it's just a fantastic place. Um, I'm a first time listener, says uh, uh, Sarah. Sarah, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, thanks for the shout. How, how do I find you to listen later? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Uh, these stay on, you know, these these are live streams on Facebook. And of course, they stay there for as long as Facebook will have us. Uh, and we don't upset them in any profound way and get cancelled or something like that. Um, but you can also go to our YouTube channel and as a podcast as well on Spotify. I hope that answers your question there. Uh, I'm going to go with Sarah. <laughs> right. uh, bon dia. COVID Brexit pff, is the comment coming in. From um, I knew <laughs> I knew other Europeans would <laughs> if they weren't peeved already they soon will be in this run up to the thirty first of December. Uh, I hope you're still talking to us, Jenny, and we'll keep we'll keep Brexit to a minimum. I do feel the need to cover COVID um, and keep people up to date with at the very least you know what's expected um, you know on this English speaking source of news so that people know what to do really in this culture. You know we, we, it's really important that we respect the um, you know the, the 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 laws customs culture uh and so it's in that spirit that i talk about covid you know what's going on and what we need to do uh, and we'll continue to do that um and um so thanks jenny for your comment there uh and owen we we used your picture this morning Owen. um let me just show everybody that 
Absolutely beautiful. Thank you for your pictures that you send in, Owen. And he's asking, where's Persian Frank this morning? We don't know. Where's Persian Frank? He's probably up late last night out on the tiles doing a few deals and all that. So not sure where FD Persian Frank is this morning, <laughs> but uh, you can enjoy his company. I've got actually got a meeting with him soon, so I need to uh, crack on. And um, hopefully um, we will find practical solutions to this banking thing. Um, but, you know, the, the, the obvious thing to do is to open a Portuguese bank account as a first step and see where that goes. Um, and um, uh, sorry to just just see I, I see comments coming in and then I feel the need to 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 uh, respond to them. Uh, Sarah, Sarah wanted to know about the evening program, I think. OK, uh, live on this uh, same place at 10 o'clock tonight, uh, Sarah, is, is what we'll do. I did say I'd say Sarah, didn't I? And now I've confused myself. Um, and even if you tell me, I've confused myself so much now, I'm still likely to get it wrong. Isn't it terrible when that happens? Is it just me or do other people do that as well? You ask people how to pronounce their name correctly. And then you think, now I know. What did they say? Oh, no. Um, so, um, yes, tonight here, 10 o'clock on Good Morning Portugal, uh, Paranormal Portugal. Yes, and going back to the bank thing, you know, some cynical people might say, well, you know, max out your credit card now. And, um, you know, what, what, what are banks going to do? I mean, I know it's in the T's and C's, obviously, when they say, OK, we can no longer give you a credit card or a bank account. You've got to pay it all back now, today. What sort of notice are they going to give? And presumably for a lot of people, if they could afford to pay off their overdraft or their credit card today as demanded, they wouldn't have a credit card or an overdraft in the first place. And I know, you know, there is a strategic advantage to using credit cards and um, overdrafts, even if you have, you know, the, the the cash to back it up. But for some people, many people, I suspect they don't. So what's going to happen to that? Uh, you know, and maybe it's just going to be a nice cheap loan for people if in, in, by the end of it. Is that is that the um, silver lining to this financial cloud? Is that you just you will just agree to pay off your credit card debt um, ten pounds a month for forever? And yeah, I, what's what? What can happen? And that is going to be, I would have would have thought that is a lot of money for British banks um, to say goodbye to. And you would have thought they would have come up with something a little bit more creative than that. Or, and certainly the, a European bank would be hearing this, smelling this and thinking, hold on a minute, we can make a fortune here. We can make it easy to, for people to transfer all of their money into our account, honor all the direct debits that they've got um, set up at the moment. You know, by its very nature, banking is global. Why is this a problem? Um, except for the fact that banks don't move very fast. Today. The likes of Revolut and new ones do, but the old ones are dinosaurs, aren't they? And that's why they're doing something like this, which is uh, ridiculous. And um, Carl, is there, is there no more palavra do dia? Well, I'm so glad you asked that because um, I forgot <laughs> today. Let's go with De Niro, shall we, for money um, today. And, of course, I'll make up a little each week. Uh, and I, I do make sure by the end of the week we do have at least five new words or phrases. So the Nero will be our word of today, of course, um, for money. Um, thank you, Jenny, for that reminder. That will be the word of the day today. And I'll pop that up later probably in the page as well. Take care and bye for now. Couldn't manage 9.30, nearly there at 9.45 again. Maybe it has to be 9.45. See you tonight at 10 for Paranormal Portugal. And um, yes, a look at spirituality and religion to balance up that uh, hour a bit as well. So, até amanhã, até logo, até já, fazia.